I'm here with Dr Derek Mahoney, Hi. orthodontist and specialist in the area of oral facial development. Can you just tell us a little bit about your background and why you are our leading Australian authority in this field? Well, I did my dental training here in Sydney and then I did my orthodontic training uh, in the UK. And what I was seeing uh, when I trained in the UK was a very um, standard approach to treatment of uh, crooked teeth which was waiting until the child was a teenager. If there was no room, pulling out teeth, putting braces on. That's why I was trained to do it, and I did that for many years. Then over the years, I realized that probably it's better to get in early for children if you want to get good facial development. And I guess the big question that parents ask me is, uh, when is the appropriate time? So when it comes to alignment of teeth, uh, appropriate time and creating space, maybe seven to nine. And that's certainly what the American Orthodontic Association is advocating. But what I want to talk about today is uh, what happens when a child has been sucking their thumb for a long time, a child has been using a pacifier for many years, uh, what impact will that have on their speech, on their um, facial development, uh, on their breathing, and I think more importantly, um, what it may have in regard to recurrent middle ear problems. Parents always ask me, uh, when is an appropriate time to stop using a pacifier? I would say don't start the pacifier to begin with. But yeah. you know, being a parent myself, that's easier said than done. We understand, <laughs> yes. Uh, sure. So I would say that if you could get rid of the pacifier by age two, and then accept the fact that you are gonna have to retrain that poor tongue posture. So let me explain a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, nothing beats breastfeeding, uh, because when you breastfeed, uh, your tongue is naturally programmed to hit the palate, your lower jaw goes forward and back to accept the milk. So it's actually training the muscles um, to perform the way they should to encourage normal facial growth and development. Yeah. And so in the ideal world, you'd want to breastfeed for that first two years of life. But again, easier said than done. So a lot of parents are giving their children pacifiers, a lot of, children, a lot of parents are using um, um, bottles for feeding. And unfortunately, whether you use a pacifier or suck your thumb, or use a bottle, the tongue is going to be underneath the teeth. So it's encouraging already the proper swallowing pattern. And the long-term effect of that, which is a part of my PhD research, um, is that the tongue does not hit the palate and stimulate its development. Hence, that child is more prone to have dental crowding. Right. Uh, so I think what parents need to understand, get rid of the pacifier as soon as you can, but then you have to retrain the tongue. What I like about the uh, mini Maya Munchie is that you're actually giving the child a new toy, right? So obviously if you take the pacifier away, there's gonna be periods of unrest and they want something in their mouth. Well, why not give them something that's beneficial rather than something that's adverse? I've had some children that have been on pacifiers, sometimes two of them, up till age four. Yeah. And then you see horrific problems with their teeth, which means major orthodontic work to recover. I think if you can get in, say, between 18 months and two years, take the pacifier pacifier away and try the Maya Munchie, you really start seeing the changes in the swallowing pattern, uh, in proper lip seal. I always say to parents, there's three important things if you want your child's face to develop uh, normally. A good lip seal, proper nasal breathing, good tongue posture. Yeah. But when do you start establishing those habits? Obviously, a young child is not going to follow instructions from a oral myologist or a speech pathologist. However, they have an ingrained um, built-in primal reflex on swallowing. So we need to change that to proper swallowing rather than what we call forward uh, swallow or tongue thrust or infantile swallowing pattern. There's all different terms for the same yeah. thing. And I think this is why this product is ideal. Yeah, great. Can we talk about, you have mentioned touched on the idea of ear infections. I have a lot of patients in my chiropractic clinic. I see a lot of paediatric patients and work with them. It's become so common. And you were just saying yesterday, it's the number one reason why people are taking children to a doctor. And the common uh, treatment for them is to then take antibiotics. And we know that longer term that has huge impacts for them. So you were discussing the, the role that the dentist can play in this area mm -hmm. of optimizing ear drainage for a child. Yeah. I think um, the technical term is called otitis media, uh, and it's very common in children who have deep bites. Uh, so I always say to pediatricians, to medical doctors, uh, when a child comes in with a recurrent otitis media, uh, unfortunately the treatment uh, in the short term is antibiotics, and if that's not successful, grommets placed. Uh, 
Um, and I have some children up to their third sets of grommets. Uh, but grommets aren't really treating the cause, it's um, treating the symptom, you know, giving artificial drainage of the eustachian tube. So um, great research by Merle Loudon, uh, it's been published in the Functional Orthodontist, has shown that a dentist can get involved in two ways, opening the bite and what we call primary molar buildups, uh, where the dentist can put basically a, um, a resin on the baby teeth, so there's no long-term damage to those teeth, but by raising the bite, it's moving the lower jaw away from that area. Uh, and then the next most important thing is not just the resin, but again, the retraining. So I'm finding using appliances such as the My Munchie, what we're able to do is encourage normal function. Now let me explain normal function. When you're on a plane and you're having difficulty uh, equalizing, what do people do? They normally swallow, and as they swallow, they hear a little pop. That's the eustachian tube being cleared, right? Now if a child is not swallowing properly, they're not getting that constant um, natural drainage. And when you're young, your eustachian tube is parallel. Uh, when you show development of the face, you can see that um, the eustachian tube changes as the face gets longer. So actually, just um, gravity helps draining it. Mm. So I think with younger children, first of all, the eustachian tube is like that. Secondly, they may have increased chance of adenoid and, and uh, tonsil enlargement. Um, and, and thirdly, of course, the deep bite. So those three things I see as a common predisposition to recurrent middle ear infection or otitis media. So I've had great success in building up the bite and then encouraging the child to use the Maya Munchie. And that constant use of the Maya Munchie is stimulating this area. And we've had tremendous results with children in that regard. And I find that too in my practice with the enlarged tonsils, getting the activity in the posterior swallow muscles really helps with drainage there too, doesn't it? Getting yes. that lymph to move because it's quite stagnant when the child is swallowing up the front. I, I think the, the, the take home message uh, for uh, a parent uh, with a young child is that um, the earlier you intervene in normal development of swallowing, of nasal breathing and of good lip seal, the better. The things against that for a young parent are um, finger sucking or thumb sucking, pacifier use, which is the biggie. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, if we can get the child off the pacifier, I think 18 months, but at the latest two years, uh, and then start retraining the swallowing pattern of the tongue with the mini my, uh, magic, um, I, I think I'm seeing at least much better development and much less need for orthodontics later on, right? I think uh, Melvin Moss explained this really well form follows function, function follows form. So if you've got the appropriate function, you're gonna get normal facial form. But why do we see so many kids that need orthodontics these days? Well, they're mouth breathers, uh, you can see they have venous pooling under their eyes, they've constantly got this posture, and many of this has been ingrained from their initial swallowing patterns, which have been incorrect because of excessive use of pacifiers uh, and, and bottles. And uh, uh, although it's nice to say no pacifier, breastfeed for two years, you know, in Western society, that's easier said than yeah, done. But parents need to be educated that there is something they can do as soon as that pacifier is removed. Do you have any correlation with tongue tie, post phrenectomy, dummy use, pacifier use, more compromise? Anything around that that you're finding? Look, um, certainly, when I was a kid, uh, any baby who was tongue-tied, uh, the midwife knew her stuff and she'd just walk around and just snip it there and then. Nowadays, no one wants to touch a newborn for fear of medical legal problems, etc. So many kids go under the radar with severe tongue ties. And when I look back, when I see a child who's seven, I look in their mouth and I see they're horribly tongue-tied. First thing I ask the mum, did you have problems breastfeeding? And the mum will say, oh, we could never breastfeed. You know, uh, So tongue ties and lip ties, I think, need to be uh, looked at. So when you do a lingual phrenectomy, and I feel that a lingual phrenectomy for feeding is probably best done as early as possible. Just doing the frenum uh, doesn't mean the child will automatically assume the correct tongue position, and this is what we're saying. Mm -hmm. So many children get a phrenectomy, um, and then they don't have any follow-up. So sometimes the scar tissue that's uh, caused by the actual phrenectomy causes the tongue to, again, um, uh, not function properly. So I think, um, Hand in hand, of course, with, uh, I love uh, Larry Kotlow's work in this field, but he's doing this for babies. And of course, the best oral myology for a baby is to put them straight back on the breast, right? But again, we're talking about an older individual now who may have a tongue tie uh, after the, the ideal date. 
uh, for that child, again, encouraging the tongue to elevate uh, is ideal. And if I can borrow this, um, you can see this is very well designed by your father from memory um, uh, uh, to encourage normal tongue position. So basically what we're doing is, um, uh, and, and, and your dad actually looked at it from a dental point of view. Remember, a child who's a mouth breather doesn't have as much saliva in their mouth uh, at night and hence more chance of plaque and tooth mm. decay. So by using this, it's encouraging salivary flow, reducing the chance of tooth decay. But the main thing from what we're talking about, it's encouraging normal function the of the tongue yeah. and the swallow. Yeah. And I think that's a really important adjunct. Yeah. So, I mean, for most children, that kind of looks like a pacifier, but the design is so much, so much better. Right. Thanks for talking with me today, Derek. Thank you for the time. Wonderful.